I'm a, somewhat of a serial entrepreneur. If I ever am frustrated about the way people are doing things and I feel I can do it better, I will dive in and try to improve something. Virgin Me, see what you can do. I've had some lucky breaks and, and have fallen flat on my face on occasions. And so I think it is quite likely that today I might still be building a spaceship company and trying to shoot for the stars, even if one or two of my early businesses had failed. But I think I would have picked myself up again and again until I succeeded. Well, I, I think that, that there isn't a lot of difference between being an adventurer and, and being an entrepreneur. If you're you know, an entrepreneur, um, you are pushing the limits. Um, you're trying to, as I said before, trying to protect the downside. And the downside as an entrepreneur is, um, is going bust. Um, as an adventurer, you're pushing the limits. Um, you want to protect the downside because the downside possibly is lo losing your life. Um, so you particularly want to protect the downside. Um, and I mean, I realized quite early on in life that um, in order to put Virgin on the map on a global basis, I didn't have the advertising power uh, of uh, our big rivals. Um, so I would have to utilize myself um, to get out there and make sure that the world knew about Virgin. Um, and I've had a lot of fun doing it as well as, um, you know, the, the sort of normal stunts you do when you, when you launch new businesses. So, you know, trying to beat the record for the fastest boat across the Atlantic. Um, you know, yes, we ended up sinking the first time, but, you know, we came back and um, were successful the second time. Um, you know, trying to be the first person to fly the Atlantic in a balloon. Yes, we sank the first time, um, but you know, anyway, the second time we were successful and, and so on. So, um, but, but I think it, it helped um, portray Virgin, you know, as a, a company that was adventurous and, um, you know, was willing to um, literally, you know, push the balloon out or the boat out, um, you know, believing in, that, in their company enough to, um, to put it on the, on the map. And, uh, anyway, it seems it's, it's been a lot of fun doing it and it seems to have worked. A dyslexic high school dropout with nothing but a dream and a little bit of courage, Richard Branson became an internationally known business giant with the creation of his empire, Virgin Group, and is worth a whopping $3.1 billion. Richard Branson is a big believer in dreaming big and being an innovative leader that his employees can trust to get the job done. Richard Branson has proven to the world that you can have roadblocks in the way of your dream, but as long as you keep going, you can achieve literally anything. I was once a child with a dream, looking up to the stars. Now, I'm an adult in a spaceship. In this video, we'll cover the five lessons we learned from Richard Branson that taught us about being a powerhouse innovator, leader, and entrepreneur. Lesson 1. Be prepared to face failure, but don't let it deter you. You know, there, there is a very, very thin dividing line between success and failure. Um, most people who set up in business without financial backing, um, they fail at some times in their lives. Um, and, you know, I've only just stayed at the right side of that dividing line. Um, for instance, just after, you know, we, we, we had a record company, I was fed up flying on other people's airlines. I, I felt that the uh, experience of flying on other people's airlines was an unpleasant one uh, and I decided to set up an airline. Uh, well, um, our bank went into, uh, into um, uh, com complete panic attack um, and uh, when I came back from doing the inaugural flight of uh, Virgin Atlantic's very, very first flight from London to New York, I, I came back to find the bank manager sitting on my doorstep uh, and, um, and informing me that they were going to close Virgin down on the Monday, and this was the Friday, and uh, that I had two days to uh, effectively pay, pay them off the monies that um, they'd, lo they'd loaned us. Um, and uh, I remember uh, pushing the bank manager out of my house, telling him he wasn't welcome, uh, which is a dangerous thing to do to your bank manager, uh, and then spending the weekend uh, ringing around the world um, to all of the distributors of our music asking if they could uh, give us a, a temporary loan to get us through the following week uh, which they were good enough to do uh, and by the end of the week we changed banks um, we'd actually managed to find a bank that was willing to lend us 30 times the, the um, overdraft facility that uh, that our bank had, had bank had lent us um, and um, 
and and we, we we managed to managed to survive. And I think, you know, the moral of that story is actually, you know, don't, you know, think of your 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 bank as somebody that you're beholden to. I mean, don't, you know, I mean, people just don't move from one bank to another. Sometimes you need to. Uh, be willing to step up and move move your banks in the same way that you should step up and move your doctor on occasions. Or, um, and um, uh, anyway, I learned, I learned from that lesson. Richard is known to take risks and try new things. In his story, he shared how he had a literal weekend to pay off the bank he was currently at, or else Virgin would be shut down. To many, this may have seemed as if it was the ultimate failure, but for Richard, it was time to pull up the bootstraps and get to work. Thanks to his hard work and determination, Virgin is still alive and kicking. Lesson two, build a team you trust and you'll see even more success. I have a fantastic team of people who run the Virgin companies, give them a lot of freedom to, to run the companies as if they were their own companies, uh, give them the freedom to make mistakes. Um, and uh, and you know, the Virgin brand is now maybe one of the top 20 brands in the world, uh, well respected. Um, and you know when my balloon bursts, um, Virgin Virgin will will, will continue to flourish. Um, uh, and you know maybe I had the icing on the cake on occasions. Maybe I'll have to spend a bit more money on uh, marketing. Um, but um, uh, but fortunately, you know, Virgin is in a state where it can uh, you know, live, live on healthily without me. But I think the the, the most important uh, the most important thing about uh, running a company uh, is to remember all the time what a company is. Um, a company is simply a group of people um, and uh, as a leader of people uh, you have to be a great listener, and you have to be a great motivator, uh, you have to uh, be very good at praising and looking for the best in people. Um, you know people are no different from, from flowers. If you water flowers they flourish, if you um, praise people they flourish and, um, and that's a critical attribute of, um, of a leader. Being a leader is one thing but having to be a leader and run a company on your own is a game not many want to play. It's important to create a team that sees your vision and want to help you accomplish it. Plus it'll help grow the business and let you know that you have a group of people who have your back and are willing to put the extra work in to make your company successful. Lesson three, do not let your challenges define you. Strangely, I think my dyslexia is, has helped in the business world in that, um, uh, in, 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 in that because I uh, have had problems when I was younger communicating, um, uh, I, need, I need, for instance, when I'm launching a new company, I need to be able to um, uh, understand the advertising. If I understand the advertising, I believe that any, anybody out there can understand the advertising. And therefore, Virgin speaks in a, in a more direct, simplistic way to, um, to people. But the amusing thing is that when I turned 50, um, I was in a, a board meeting. I hate board meetings, but I was in a board meeting. And, um, and, I, and I asked somebody, is that good news or is that bad news? When they mentioned something was, uh, some, a, a, figure, a figure was something net. And um, so the director afterwards took me outside and said, "Look, Richard, I can, you know, I've, I've been in these board meetings with you for 20 years, and and none of us have been brave enough to sort of, you know, to take you on one side. But you obviously don't know the difference between net and gross." <laughs> and, and 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 he said, no, you know, here, here's here's the ocean, you know, here's 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 the net and the ocean. The fish that are inside the net, that's the money we've got left over at the end of the year. That's and, and then the rest of the ocean is the gross, <laughs> and that's so." <laughs> Ah, got it. <laughs> so we had the largest group of private companies in Europe and the, cha the chairman had no idea how to read net or gross. <laughs> Ever since he was young, Richard faced challenges with his dyslexia, a learning disability that makes it hard for people to decode language and read. But Richard didn't allow this disability to stop him from his dream of creating businesses. He instead made sure that he turned his business model into a simple structure that was clear and to the point so everyone, regardless of their learning ability, would be able to understand it. Lesson four, break some rules responsibly. Yes, I mean, conventional wisdom will say that, um, and I suspect, you know, any, any of you who've been to business schools, you'll be taught 
you know, you should specialize in one area <clears throat> and try not to stray from that area. And that uh, the best businesses in the world are those best, those businesses that uh, stick to their core. Um, and actually, if you look at, uh, if you look at the top 20 um, uh, brands in the world, um, you have got, you know, Nike specializing in shoes. You do have micro Microsoft specializing in computers or Coca-Cola specializing in soft drinks. And you can't really imagine, you know, Coca-Cola airline or, um, so, uh, um, but I don't think, uh, you know, I mean, personally, I think rules are made, made to be broken. And what, what we've at Virgin tried to do um, <coughs> is to create a, um, a way of life brand, um, a brand that, you know, tackles major companies in quite a lot of different sectors. Um, and it wasn't something we actually set out to do. Um, I mean, I you know, left school at 15 to, uh, you know, because I wanted to start a magazine run by students to, uh, to try to put the world right. I mean, there was the Vietnamese war going on. I'm afraid, you know, the equivalent of what's happening in Iraq, but in Vietnam, um, I was against it. And I was, um, you know, campaign, wanted a, a voice to campaign to try to, um, you know, to, to stop it or have a, our little play our little bit in trying to stop it. There was, you know, the way we were being <coughs> taught at school. Um, you know, you would, you would spend eight years learning French and, in, in an English school and you'd come out not speaking French and, and, and the way we were being taught was not conducive to learning it. So, so my principal aim was to create a business that, um, you, know, you know, to create a magazine that, that would make a difference. And, you know, it wasn't going into creating a magazine to make money or to become an entrepreneur. It was creating a magazine, um, you know, to make a difference. And, you know, since then, you know, we've gone into a lot of different areas, a lot of different businesses. Again, you know, not with the purpose of becoming a serial entrepreneur, um, but because, you know, we, we have seen, um, you know, I mean, I used to fly when we had a record company on a lot of other people's airlines and the experience was dire. Um, uh, and if you've ever flown on an American carrier, um, you're, I won't mention Canada, Canadian carriers, um, you'll, you'll know what I mean. And, and so I decided, that if you, if you could create an airline that, um, you know, where, where the staff were actually enjoying, you know, working on that plane and they were actually proud of, you know, the, the tools they were given and, 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 uh, and they were proud of the service they were offering the consumers and it was actually a fun airline to fly, that it might be successful. And um, so in that particular case, um, you know, sat down with Boeing and said, you know, um, I'd like to buy a, a secondhand 747. Um, and you know, I, you know, I was the person that had brought brought them, brought the Sex Pistols and a few other bands. So they actually must have thought me absolutely mad. Um, but um, anyway, they they sort of maybe spotted something in me that made me made them think that we could maybe build a competitor to British Airways. Um, uh, but I also made a stipulation because I didn't want to bring everything else that I've built come crump crushing down. If I, if I was wrong about the airline business, I said, look, you know, I've got to protect the downside. I may be completely wrong that there's an opening um, for Virgin Atlantic. Um, at the end of the first year, I want the right to hand that plane back to you if, you know, if, if I'm wrong. And it might mean that you won't make any money, um, but you, know, you won't lose any money either. And, and, you know, and, and we can both walk away from it. Um, so you know, by protecting the downside, I could then convince, well, just about convince my fellow directors at Virgin Records uh, to let us start an airline. And as it turned out, after the first year, things were going quite well. While rules are made for good reason, they are also made to be broken. Richard expresses how by sticking to one niche in business is such a waste of potential not only for your growing business, but for yourself as well. As long as you consider all the factors in going outside your niche, it is good to break rules as long as you consider all the factors in breaking said rules. Lesson five, don't be afraid to take on the big guys. Bigger businesses um, are, 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 likely to, you know, are likely to come up with uh, ferocious competitions. So to beat a big business, um, you've just got to um, use your use of strengths of being small. Um, you, 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 generally speaking, if you work for a big corporation, it's quite impersonal. And, and quite often the staff are not looked after well and, and quite often the staff actually don't like going to work because they're not treated well. In, in, a, in a smaller company, um, you can make sure that your staff are looked after well. You can make sure your 
staff are proud of what they're doing. You can make sure that you know that they believe in what they're doing and they work um, you know long hours to try to um, to make to make the company a success. Um, as a small company, you can be more nimble. You can move move more quickly. Um, I mean, with with um, you know Virgin Atlantic, for instance, if we want to you know change all our seats in our plane to better seats, um, you know we can do so in you know maybe nine months. For, for British Airways, it will take them seven years. Um, so you know by by being more nimble, one can one can um, one can move quicker. One can be more innovative. Um, and uh, innovate more. Uh, so it is possible for, you know, for small companies. You can keep your overheads you know, lower so you can actually un undercut the bigger guy. And most likely the bigger guys had years of building up um, you know, overheads that you as a small company haven't yet got and hopefully never will have. Um, so uh, so it, is, it, it is possible for smaller companies to beat bigger companies, but uh, you have to be uh, quick of foot and as you say, um, never take no for an answer. As Richard has pointed out, starting out small has its advantages for you and your potential customers. By being able to calculate and grow in a steady rate, you'll be able to offer your customers a better deal. With bigger competition, don't be afraid to stand your ground and let them know just because you're small doesn't mean they can bully you out. Point in starting a business unless you're going to make a, a dramatic difference to other people's lives. So if you've got an idea that's going to make a big difference, then just just get on and do it. Successful startup needs you you as an individual to be 100% committed to what you're going to do. Um, be willing to use yourself to get out there and put the company on the market. So you know if you have to make a fool of yourself, make a fool of yourself, but make sure that you end up on the the front pages, not the back pages of the newspapers. Surround yourself with great people who 100% who believe in what you're trying to do and the passion you've got and, what, and the difference you're trying to make. And you know, if you do succeed, there's nothing more fun in life than, than being able to build a business and then you know, being able to try to sort out the problems of the world with the financial resources that you've made from building that business. Yeah, thanks, sorry. The, sky, the sky's not the limit anymore. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I still sometimes wake up in the morning and my eyes are closed and I, I pinch myself because you know it seems I've had too good a life for, for one person um, which is perhaps one of the reasons why I want to try to make other people's lives a little bit you know a little bit better you know sort of give give back a bit um, but um, uh, but the next 10 years you know I'm, I'm in a position where I really can make a difference and I'm determined to make a difference Richard is also a well-known philanthropist and advocate for many different causes. He has helped over 28 different causes ranging from gender equality and LGBTQ plus rights to climate change. He believes that with the success he has, it is only right to want to help others. Which one of these lessons will you use to help make your future brighter? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up with new videos.